So that UFO story, you know, that one you've probably already seen on various news sites, or perhaps seen trending on X. That UFO story also involves a werewolf. Yes, I said werewolf. Pentagon officials claimed it's real, and an image was recently released showing for the first time what the creature looked like. But this story has a very strange twist. A twist that involves the country of New Zealand, $22 million, and an Xbox. I'm not going to go into the full backstory here because I've already done that in my previous reports at the New York Post. A link to these reports is in the description below. In this video, I'm just going to focus on the werewolf. Since 1995, Skinwalker Ranch in Utah is a place that many people have claimed is a hot spot for UFOs, ghosts, and monsters. Monsters like Bigfoot and bulletproof wolf creatures. No evidence has ever been presented at all to support any of this, and my previous reporting at the Post has debunked much, if not all, of Skinwalker Ranch as a bunch of malarkey. As I previously reported in these two episodes, in 2007, two Pentagon officials named Jay Stratton and James Lakatsky read a book about Skinwalker Ranch. Lakatsky was a believer in the Skinwalker spooky stuff, and so he convinced Senator Harry Reid, another believer in spooky stuff, to acquire $22 million to investigate spooky stuff like Skinwalker Ranch. And as I've previously reported, it was this program that the news media erroneously reported about. They incorrectly labeled it a UFO program, without any mention of the Skinwalker Ranch spooky stuff. And to this day, the news media has yet to correct itself, continuing to report a false story about a UFO program. During the actual program back in 2009, Stratton went to Skinwalker Ranch, and it's claimed that while there, he became possessed or infected by a Skinwalker ghost, and that it followed him back to his home over 2,000 miles away in the Washington, D.C. area. In 2021, Lakatsky released a self-published book about this $22 million ghost hunt and claimed that after leaving Skinwalker Ranch, Stratton's home became haunted by evil spooky things that tormented him and his family for years. And that brings us to the werewolf. Lakatsky says the first werewolf encounter happened in 2009 at night when Stratton's wife looked out their kitchen window and saw a huge wolf creature standing on two legs, leaning against a tree. She claims the werewolf looked right at her in a not friendly way, and then it disappeared into the woods. Three days later, Stratton's teenage sons claim they saw the same werewolf outside in their yard. Again, the wolf monster looks at them and then goes away. Stratton and the other government ghost hunters attributed the appearance of this werewolf as a manifestation of the Skinwalker Ranch spooky stuff that had followed Stratton home to haunt him. So did the Strattons actually witness a real werewolf? Beyond the written stories, no evidence has ever been provided regarding these encounters. For example, Jay Stratton says he found claw marks on the tree that the wolf monster was leaning on. He says he has photos of these claw marks, but he's never released them. As such, it was up to the reader to imagine what was lurking outside Stratton's suburban home. But then, in May 2023, we finally got something to sink our teeth into. Rice University invited Colm Kelleher to give a presentation on the $22 million program that investigated Skinwalker Ranch. Kelleher had been a part of this program and was also the co-author of these two books about Skinwalker Ranch. During his speech, Kelleher discussed the Stratton werewolf, and for the first time, we got to see 
what they say this creature looked like. The left panel shows a, a, a sort of a drawing that was done on uh, some of the family members of this guy uh, who had brought stuff home with them. And this is what they, uh, both kids and the wife saw at different times. He says this was, quote, a drawing that was done on some of the family members that witnessed the wolf creature. The way he phrases that sounds like a police sketch. You know, where a sketch artist comes in, listens to a physical description from a witness, and then draws a picture of the suspect. So let's look at this suspect. It's pretty scary, isn't it? Could you imagine seeing this thing at night in your backyard? Unfortunately, Kelleher quickly moves on from the werewolf and doesn't offer any additional details or address some confusing things that were on the werewolf slide, such as why does it say Axelrod instead of Stratton? Well, as I previously reported, the Skinwalker ghost hunters, such as Kelleher, refer to Jay Stratton as Jonathan Axelrod in their books. Axelrod is simply a pseudonym for Stratton. Also, what the heck is Balverine? Is that the name of the werewolf? Is that a specific breed of werewolf? Kelleher never addresses this. Also, something is written next to the werewolf sketch. I adjusted the contrast of the writing, and it says this. Born of a full moon, those said to be bitten, who resisted poison and cheated death, becoming one of the clan. What the f Kelleher also never addresses this. So I did some Googling, and this is where the story of Jay Stratton's werewolf goes from weird to hilarious. This specific drawing that Kelleher claimed was a sketch, quote, done on some of the Stratton family members after their 2009 encounter is actually a piece of fan art published on the website DeviantArt in 2005, four years before the Stratton werewolf encounter. The artist lives in New Zealand and is a fan of the video game Fable. One of the monsters in the video game is a werewolf called a Balverine. And a Balverine werewolf is a specific fictional monster created specifically for this one specific video game. What the f I posted this weird discovery on X, and amazingly, Dean Carter, the actual creator of the Fable video game, replied. He was shocked to see his video game werewolf being used in university speeches about a Pentagon ghost hunting program. Um, I'm the guy who invented Balverines. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me regarding my work. For those who are concerned, Balverines, one, aren't real, two, weren't even very original, three, C.1. He then shared an early concept sketch he had made of the Balverine werewolf, complete with a pile of werewolf poo. I reached out to Colm Kelleher and asked him about why he had showed a 2005 fan drawing of a video game werewolf to represent a drawing done on the Stratton family describing a creature they saw in 2009. Mr. Kelleher responded and said this. When asked to describe what they saw, the witnesses pulled Balverine from the internet and told us that this Balverine character that they pulled from the internet was the closest rendition they could find of what they had witnessed. I also asked Mr. Kelleher if he thinks it's possible that the Stratton kids, who were teenagers at the time, were perhaps fans of the Fable video game. Mr. Kelleher said he doesn't remember anyone mentioning that specific game. So all this video game stuff notwithstanding, the Strattons still claim they saw a big, hairy creature outside their home. So what was it? I think I might have an idea. Public records and Skinwalker Ranch documents show that in 2009, the Strattons lived in Mechanicsville, Maryland. Mechanicsville and many other suburban areas in southern Maryland have had multiple cases of wild black bears stumbling into people's yards over the years. And residents are often shocked 
and scared to see such a creature wandering through suburbia. A quick Google search brings up multiple cases of black bears in and around the town the Strattons lived in. Black bears are known to sometimes stand up on two legs, like this and this. The Strattons say the creature they saw was leaning against a tree. Black bears often stand up and scratch their backs on trees, like this and this. Jay Stratton says there were claw marks on the tree in his yard. This is a photo of a black bear's claw marks on a tree. And a black bear suffering from mange, which is a common skin disease, does look kind of werewolfy. So it looks very possible that the Strattons actually saw a black bear and that they misidentified it as a werewolf. If so, that wouldn't be the last time Stratton misidentified something. Because Jay Stratton was the head of a Pentagon task force charged with investigating unidentified craft over American skies. For years, Stratton thought he was seeing otherworldly UFOs. He thought he was seeing something spooky. But we now know that some of Stratton's UFOs were actually foreign spy craft. Stratton and his task force had misidentified them. After a Chinese spy balloon was shot out of the sky in early 2023, it was reported that similar balloons had been flying over America for years. But during this time in the Pentagon, Stratton, quote, was diverting government resources to researching truly unconventional UFOs at the expense of addressing Chinese balloons. Stratton left the task force and was replaced as its director after complaints from some defense officials that he was, quote, crazy. And they stated they became concerned he was crazy after hearing him tell stories about the ghosts of Skinwalker Ranch and the wolf man stalking his house. <laughs> <laughs>